that is that I've given myself a little blueprint with the section that I've taken and all I've done guys is section this off following that crow pattern at the back all along the crown there. So I've sectioned off everything that is on the flat part of the head right into the crown. Now I have the back and the sides. And from this line, I'm gonna lift all the way up to the number two and just lift off as I get there. And we're gonna just lift beneath it with the zero all the way up into my 0.4. Still got a little bit of the line left at the bottom, that's fine. All we do then is go back in with our shorter slipper. The only time generally this will happen where you need to come back in with your shorter slipper, generally speaking, is when the hair is really dense. Otherwise guys, that standard zero will generally remove that zero line almost every single time. Make sure I have what's called a guide from that previous section. Match that up. My body is parallel to that, standing opposite it. So I'm going to cut the line from top to bottom. Coming along the bottom then to the hair that I want to keep, I'm going to pivot away from the head and keep everything nice and soft externally. section number one I'm going to leave it slightly disconnected from the front okay I can see where I cut previously all I'm going to do now is follow that guide see how jaggedy the line looks if I use scissors that line will be perfectly straight yeah but we don't want to create that look on it today not looking to change or reduce so much of the shape. I'm quite happy with the length. How much length that I need to remove. Cutting this dry is absolutely fine. Okay, there is times where I would highly advise against cutting dry, but in this case, I just follow Andy's natural hairline round. Okay, I'm going to follow it to the left as it moves round the head. Okay. When it comes to shaping up the hairline, does it does not need to be difficult.
that the blade is parallel to the section guys if we pivot or angle the scissor in any way what will happen actually end up cutting little triangles into the section which is something that we generally want to avoid doing we want to ensure that the scissor is parallel to the section that I'm holding up and make sure that the scissor is kind of dipping in and out So simply we begin with the number two along the contour working off of the last square point. Okay? That allowed us to build a square shape along the contours and made sure that we, we didn't go too high and remove too much bulk. After that we used the high skin line using the temple peak point as a guide. We worked the horizontal line back which means that there was no dip in the line towards the back. Then the technique that we used was called the no guard fade. I used my 0.5 from the double zero line all the way to the number two, skipping the one, the 1.5, the transition, okay, so we had less guards. And then lastly, we used the zero to blend the double zero into the 0.5. After that, we ran through the top and just cut some of it dry, not much, just barely went through it just to restructure some of it. Then we added a nice shape up and a beard finesse to finish. And all we've done is you guys, nice little section along the front here took section number two down to number one three down to number one also made this nice and blunt across the front section yeah and then we walked through some graduation around the back and sides just to slim in the shape and then we just removed a little bit of weight on the top so we got a nicer shape on it overall